Welcome back to Combined by Alana. Here's part two of my sit down with Gil Jacobs. I listened to Mike's podcast, um, Mike Perrine, uh, where he talked to Dr. Fred Bishy, and he said, and I'm going to quote him, um, they're talking about colonics. And he said people use colonics like someone who's bulimic does if they're ashamed of what they ate. Um, I have to imagine you have experienced this. Actually, people who don't understand this, what's interesting, he turned his opinion around on colonics real hard as he got older and started to have things happen to him. Real hard. What do you mean? That's a quote that makes it sound like they're not to be done or they're not of great value. So, sorry, let me give you yeah. context. So he, um, no, he's actually, he was, he was promoting colonics and saying that if you're in a certain place, if you're, you know, essentially, um, you know, Colonics are not meant to be for those who have had a crazy wild night, have gone on a binger, well, and then that. nobody does that. There are some people. No, that I mean, I'll I'll not say here. not okay, yeah. maybe not here, but there are some people who I I believe will you know have a whole a whole night out or whatever, well, and then they're like, it's cool, I'm getting a colonic okay, the next well, day. Here's the thing: people think that, but. Clearly, anyone who's thinking that doesn't understand the biochemistry. There are people yeah. who will do that once. Yeah. But they don't do it again because they don't release. Colonics don't pull out bad food. They pull out good food, knocking loose bad food. Mm. So if you come in here on a high-protein diet or a bender, all I'm going to do is fill you with water. Nothing's going to come out. You're going to feel like shit. Mm -hmm. And you're not coming back. There are no regular clients doing that. Now, does it right. happen every now and then? Yes. But one-shot deals have nothing to do with the lifestyle. Uh -huh. Anyone who does this once, it's like, say, hey, I took a half a class, I'm enlightened. Uh -huh. Do you know? It's one shot. I don't care about somebody who comes once and doesn't come back. Yeah. I'm interested in the people invested. There is no one invested doing that. Mm -hmm. So it's a deadbeat point because, yeah, you get some idiots. I used to get people from the club scene. That had friends who did this. Okay. They come rolling in from Twilo, stoned out of their head. Yeah. They wanted to get cleaned, and I just send them away. I say, look, you'll have a heart attack if really? I put you on the table. But if I, then you get on occasion someone who eats like shit comes in, but no one is going to maintain that because the treatments don't release. Yeah. That matter is adhering to the body like cement. What will get that matter out is three days of fruit and vegetables mm -hmm. emulsifying it. Yeah. Now, suppose someone's in the loop and doing very well and maybe once a week has a bad night. Mm -hmm. What they will do is take the next two days, do everything well, and come in here. I'm yeah. fine with that. That's fabulous. As long as the bad night is only happening once a week, yeah. you fix it by two days of proper food and a treatment the next day. Yeah, it's People like, are going to cheat no matter what. So if it's better to cheat, do two good days and do a colonic mm -hmm. than just leave the cheat in there. Right. No, it's like when you See? travel, like, or when I travel or something, like, I come two days later because you need to get your body back. Yeah, to... but you don't come the minute after. You no. take the two days to prepare. Now, here's another thing with that, too, that people don't understand. Let's say by some miracle, and this does not happen, someone who eats like shit has great treatments because they have a cast iron colon. Newsflash, keep coming. If you release, you need to be here. I don't care if you're yeah. eating White Castle. If you, for some reason have this amazing ability to release on the table, uh -huh. you need to be here. Newsflash, that food is harming you 90% less. Sad fact is, no one has a bowel like that. That doesn't happen on anyone. Yeah. No one who eats poorly gets decent colonics. Yeah. But my point is, if they could, they should be here, regardless of what that statement implies, because right. if they do release, it is making them better. Right. But the point is, it's not gonna work because bad food doesn't leave the body till it's kicked in. Mm -hmm. You see? Yes. And that whole argument about that, like, you would have to be an idiot to come here once a week and come back if you're not releasing a lot. Yeah. Because if I run 30 gallons of water or 20 through your body mm -hmm. and you don't release, you now have 20 gallons permeating a full colon. You feel like death. That's awful. You'd have to be a masochist to come back. <laughs> Do you see that? Um, the other, the other facet around that, too, is people will say things like, so-and-so is doing too many. Uh -huh. right, now, let's say someone has a problem, like a rough problem, like this guy had really bad psoriasis, which if you've ever seen, is ugly. Oh, you don't want that. Oh, it's this 
like this color is all over your body with uh -huh. white flakes on it. It itches when you scratch it, you bleed. Uh -huh. So I had this guy come with some rhinoses. He also had dermatitis, his hands looked like a lobster. Damn. A little orthodox Jewish, a uh, Hasidic man. So his wife said, go do this. So the, all the Hasidic men listened to their wives, so he came. Right? Yeah. So lo and behold, she had prepped him well with the diet. The guy releases like crazy, right? And he gets up and he immediately felt the psoriasis was less burning. His skin felt cooler. It didn't go away, but he felt cooler. And I said to him, listen, if you want to, you don't have to. Since your wife has you on the diet to a really high degree, just come back in three days. And all we're going to do is commit to that one. If you release like this, you're coming back. I did him, by the time I got to a month, I think the guy did 13 kilometers. Wow. Spotless. I swear to you on a stack of Bibles, spotless. Not no a way. Time. Now, a lot of his friends and other people who were coming that knew him, that's too many, that's too many. A lot of healers would tell you that's too many. When a colonic releases a boatload, uh -huh. there is no circumstance where someone can say to you, hey, he just pulled seven pounds of putrefied poisonous waste out of you, but because of X, Y, and Z, you were better off keeping it in. Yeah. If you release every day, you come every day. I don't care if that's nine years in a row. Yeah. If you're a 60-year-old man with cancer and a belly, that's an infinite volume of matter. If we open you up like a pinata and you start pouring black cement because you're into the radical cleansing diet, I've done this with many cancer people. I said, I treat you for 10 bucks. Come back tomorrow. I want to see what wow. happens. They pass it again. So come back, do that come time. back. If it releases, you should be here. There is no such thing as too many ever. Now, when does too many become a topic is when they stop releasing. Because if I'm putting water in and not enough is coming out, and that happens too often, it throws you all off. It sure. happens rarely, but it does. And I've had to tell people, you got to cut back. It's not releasing enough to warrant this frequency. We could get you dependent. All these bad things happen. Yeah. But that only happens if someone's coming often and not releasing. But... Most people who don't release don't come off, and because they don't release, they don't feel the benefit and the need. Right. So what we're talking about here is a needle in a haystack. We're talking about a white whale, a four-leaf clover. Mm -hmm. This particular topic happens yes. once a decade. Once a decade, yeah. you get somebody coming off and that doesn't release when the frequency is too high. Most people won't come back. They're not feeling the effect. Why spend 200 bucks? Do you ever notice anybody like who's coming is disordered? Used to be a ton. Yeah. Not now. In the 90s, I had to interview every woman. Every he... single girl I had to interview because the 90s was the decade of bulimia and anorexia. That type of case of someone coming rapid fire and not releasing and being off is so rare. Yeah. It so hardly ever happens okay. that it's not even worth discussing. And it, you, anyone who thinks that does ask. has never been around the clientele and has never been around the work. Yeah, no, you're the one to ask. In your opinion, what's the best way for somebody to detox their cells? Is to get into what we're talking about gradually. Okay. Like, look at where you are, ask yourself, what's been my diet for the last six months? Uh -huh. Now, what's worse than if they eat anything they want is if they're following the high-protein diet. That's worse. Yeah. Because that, when the protein kicks up, oh, oh, it's tough. So if that's the case, you got to go really slowly. So you would do, as we said, fruit in the morning, yeah, okay. salad, all that business that we talked about. Okay. If someone's doing that already and wants to detox. Detox is basically about raising the bar. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing something at a given level, you do it higher, mm -hmm. you see? So let's say somebody wakes up and never eats junk food, doesn't cheat, only has whatever. You look at what you're doing and you raise the vibration. So if you were doing fruit for breakfast and you want to detox, raise the vibration, do um, apple, lachinato, kale juice instead. If you were doing um, salad and a whole grain lunch, raise the vibration, do fruit or an avocado salad instead. Mm -hmm. If you're doing salad, mammal, protein dinner, raise the vibration, do a salad and yams instead. Whatever you're doing based on all we've talked about, right. just raise the bar. The order for foods, just for people to know, mm -hmm. juices are the highest vibe, 
Juices can be all the veggies with a little bit of fruits. We never do straight fruit juices. Yeah. Fruits are the strongest cleanser. If we bombard with fruit sugar too often, that's gotten people in a lot of trouble. Get a clonic yeah, every, even, every day. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just not practical to yeah. do that. So lots of greens mixed with apples is fine. That's the highest vibe. Eating fruit as solid food is the next highest vibe. Sprouts, green leaves are the next highest vibe. These are all very high. What they call shoots, celery, cucumbers, bell peppers, fennel mm -hmm. are the next highest vibe. Up into that, that's all very high. Mm -hmm. Then we get cabbage, by the way, is in with the raw greens. Such oh. an underrated food, fabulous food. It's the universal vegetable, grows all over the world. Lasts in the fridge for a long time. Too. Yeah, it's, it's great if you're money challenged. Yes. A head of cabbage is a week of salads. Yeah. It's a good money challenge. Yeah. So now we get down to celery, fennel, cucumbers. Next comes the vegetables meant to be cooked, which would be, well, in between there's someplace the same level as the celery, fennel would be carrots, beets, mm -hmm. those two. They're unique. They're semi-starch, but they're so powerful as healers, yeah. they go there. Then we get to the veggies meant to be cooked. Broccoli, green beans, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, parsnips, the light veggies that are meant to be cooked. Still a very high value. Meant to be cooked. Yeah, you don't eat raw parsnips or raw broccoli. That's stupid. These raw food chefs with this minced cauliflower, I want to smack them. Cauliflowers are cooked food. Don't be stupid. Got right? it. So cauliflower, broccoli, green beans, that's a high level. The next level is the heavy squashes. Now spaghetti squash gets its own level. It's a yep. very high vibe food. The cleanest of the squashes, they go alone. It's actually a cleanser. It's a neutral. Yeah. The next group is the other squashes. And this is still very high. It sounds like we're way down. We're not. We're still at the peak of the iceberg. Yeah. Kombucha squash, acorn squash, Hubbard squash, they're the next level. Then comes yams. Purple potatoes, yams, sweet potatoes, cassavas, yucca. Still very high. White potatoes is next. That's the bottom of the superstar. It's like being 12th man on the Knicks. <laughs> you're the 12th man on the bench, but you're still on the professional team, so yeah. you're a fabulous player. We may need to pick a better team. White, yeah. White <laughs> potatoes. Well, this year the Knicks are good. White potatoes are a health food. All these people that knock potatoes need to be yeah. smacked. The reason people knock it is because of the whiteness. They connect it to white flour, milk, cheese, but it's not. It's a vegetable. Yeah. It's healthier than all grains. So once you get to white potatoes, everything we set up, that's the order of things. Mm -hmm. So when you look at your own cleansing, ask yourself, wherever you are, you just keep coming up that list. You get below potatoes, now you have millet, quinoa, um, buckwheat, are really high level okay. grains. Now we go amaranth, all the different rices come next. Then we go spelt, camut, rye, barley come next. Notice I'm not saying nuts and seeds. Based yeah. on my overwhelming experience with women, they do not do well with nuts and seeds. They're too heavy, they sit in them like a rock. 95% of the vegan women, the raw food vegan women, I'm, I can't do that. If you can, if you truly think you can and they don't slow you down, mm -hmm. they would come at the same level as the squashes and yams and potatoes. They're, yeah. they're kind of the same. I, personally, I know very few women who thrive with them. You can try them, make yeah. sure they're raw. We never do coconuts, that's a disaster. Because uh, when you cook fat and protein, you create heavy poison, mm. okay? So you can try them, but I'm telling you right now, if you're a person into cleansing and you're aware of your body and you do a lunch of a salad and a handful of almonds, I guarantee you're going to crash. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't work with women. And I'm like, I, I eat like tahini a ton. That's a seed, but it's blended. And it's also so not as right? much. You think you're probably using a tablespoon. You know, it's not. But if Maybe. it's the heaviest thing in the meal... But be aware, how do you feel half hour later? What happens? Do you come, like, do you have the Thanksgiving hangover? You know, when everyone falls It's like asleep? the kabocha squash um, with the, with, like, uh, then a, um, a steamed, and then steamed broccoli and... And tahini? tahini. All right, but it's probably not a lot, not a lot of volume. But be aware, for people listening, and this is coming from an overwhelming feedback from my clientele, mm -hmm. they hate them. 
Fascinating. Yeah, my friend Diane in Florida does colonics, tells people the same thing, Tom DeVito. It's all from observation. Hmm. So even though in the books they're high up the food chain in yeah. practice, there's another thing about this stuff, why I'm not an ardent um, believer in exclusive raw. And this is a big one, for, especially for women. This is a big one. The stomach, organ one of digestion, sits under the left rib cage. Mm -hmm. The stomach is not the colon. It's just the stomach. When food gets into the stomach, the stomach moves it around, turns it into mushy. It then passes the mushy into the small intestine. Digestion takes place in the small intestine, goes through the ileocecal valve. Now it's in the colon, it's garbage, get it out. That's how things move through. Now the stomach can hold two pounds, but here's what makes this tricky, and this is why I'm a big anti-nut guy, mm. anti-seed guy. The stomach can hold two pounds. It cannot differentiate what two pounds. So to your stomach, two pounds of butter is the same as two pounds of watermelon. Now two pounds of watermelon is harmless. Yeah. We don't even have to speak about what two pounds of butter is. Yeah. See, once it hits the intestine after it gets into the duodenum, your intestine starts noticing the makeup of it. Which is why if you sat here and ate two pounds of butter, you wouldn't feel sick in the first hour. Two, three hours later when it's in, oh, you're keeling over. Now, here's what gets tough. And this is a biggie. People like their meals to take some time. Nobody wants a six-minute dinner. Uh -huh. Like, duration right. counts. Well, they, I've learned that. They should. They, they should. should. they should chew and right. whatever. Duration counts. The most nuts a human body can tolerate is about five ounces. Huh. It takes about, because of the calories... Yeah. It's, it's, it's about, it's not a lot. It goes quick. Yeah. That's the most you can take because they're so caloric. Once it gets past that, you're overwhelming your body with food. Now, here's the problem. If you make a meal out of a salad and five ounces of almonds, mm -hmm. it's done. Here's where it gets rough. That's only five ounces of almonds. Your stomach feels basically empty. If somebody eats cooked beets and brown rice, it's big on the plate. Uh -huh. It weighs about two pounds, but it's only about 600 calories. Yeah. So by the time they get a little stressed, I've had enough, they haven't overeaten. Got because it. it's big in the stomach. The stomach feels the two pounds and tells them to stop. But with nuts, you have to believe yeah. the knowledge because your body's not going to tell you to stop because it's not full. And most people, until they get into this, eat for fullness. So they'll eat six ounces of almonds, which is too much, and then they keep, I'm gonna throw some dates in. So by the time they stop, they've put a pound of dates in, they don't feel, they don't feel that much. Maybe they keep going. Now it's three hours later, boom. I hit so what nuts, why they don't work pragmatically, they scream over eat me. So I'm, I'm curious, and this lifestyle, like- It's a good, it's a big question. We're not that. like Huge. about like, Say it. We're not about counting. We're not about measuring. We're not. We're not about measuring on the bottom. This is huge, huge for the, this for the health of me. Calories don't count on the low end of the thermometer. Okay. In other words, what I live on, air, I breathe all day. I make a vegetable juice at five o'clock. Yeah. I have one meal. Probably if it's a fruit meal, I'm having 400 calories a day. Yeah. Doesn't mean anything Radical. because of the vitality of the juice and the food. On the low end, it means nothing. Uh -huh. Now, here's what blows up what you said like a bomb. On the high end, it means everything, and you damn well better be counting. Because once you get over a given amount of calories on the high end, you're damaged. In the high end, you're saying... When it's too many. It doesn't matter what it comes from, as evidenced by the fact to eat 2,000 calories. Just overeating worth, anything it's too in many, general. It's too much yeah. food. Yeah. Like to get to 2,000 yeah. calories of apples, you'd have to eat about 60 apples, which clearly would kill you. But I guess you're right? saying like three or four ounces of nuts. Sorry not to interrupt it's you. It's enough. But that's, that's, it. that's like nothing. But it's 800, 900 calories. Which is so day. interesting because right. it's like... Correct. That's See, so, here's the point. If a person so overeats nut butters and dried fruits, uh -huh. and it can tally. I've seen this kid, Ian, I used to know. We used to, he was eating 4,000 calories a night yeah. of nuts and dried fruits. Uh -huh. Now, he's thinking it's healthy calories, but here's the point. Once your caloric intake crosses, say, 1,500 at a meal or 2,000, if we're being generous, mm -hmm. you're poisoning yourself. 
I don't give a shit if you're eating wheatgrass. If you get to the point where you have 4,000 calories in a meal, you bet that number counts. You are destroying yourself. Yeah. There is no food where you can say, and this is a biggie, there is no food where you can say, I just ate 4,000 calories in a meal, but because the food is A, B, and C, it's fine. Uh -huh. No, it isn't. Because what it takes to get to 4,000 calories of a food means you're killing yourself. And you're overwhelming the system. Right. And so when we say calories don't count, don't it. count numbers, that's when we're talking the bottom. In other words, for people like me who under eat and take in nothing, it doesn't matter if I know what I'm doing. But there's no such thing as I'm taking in 6,000 calories a day, but because it's organic almonds from Mesopotamia, I'm fine. Okay. No, you're not. The normal person. You're killing anybody. There is no 6,000 calorie day that's healthy. You're killing yeah. yourself no matter what you're eating. That's really important. Right. Because it means the volume is over the top. Yeah, and any if, and anyone like in the cleansing life like knows it. you are, couldn't do it. Knows this yeah. and and right like does, does not. But numbers count. Like numbers can like be this. really. If someone likes nut butter, they need to look on the side of the jar, see how many calories in that jar. You eat the whole jar. If that's three thousand yeah. calories, newsflash: two Twinkies is less harmful than ten ounces of raw cashews. It is because of volume. Yeah. 10 ounces of cashews are not a perfect food. See, the reason this doesn't come up with produce, you couldn't eat a lot of calories of produce. Yeah. You, you couldn't eat, you wouldn't. Yeah. Who's going to eat 80 apples in a day? So in, with th those kind of food, it doesn't matter. But when you get to the healthy, heavy food, I you're see. damn right it matters. No, that, okay, that makes a lot more People sense. People who sit there me. drinking coconut oil, like eating coconut butter and honey all day, Inherently, they're not bad foods. Yeah. You eat a whole jar, you're better off eating two oatmeal cookies. That's fascinating. Two slices of Wonder Bread is a better choice. Two slices of crappy white bread yeah. is a better choice than 15 slices of Ezekiel because of volume and caloric intake. Right. It counts right. on the high end, not the low end. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. No, it does make yeah. sense. because it's, it's No, it's good to know, too. For me as an educator, too, like, you know, just knowing, I mean, you always teach me something anyway. Well, here, here's a great example. Suppose, like, people are into health that like nut butters. They'll get amarantha, raw, organic nut butter, and here's Skippy peanut butter. If this dude eats half a jar of raw amarantha and this guy eats two tablespoons of Skippy, that guy's way better off because of the under eating. Yeah. If there's that big a gap uh -huh. in the volume of heavy food, you're better off going with little bits of junk food. The people who lived to 100, it wasn't what they ate, it was the smallness of what mm. they ate. There's a lot of factors here. So the minute you started that calorie statement, that's why I jump because it's, yeah. it's a half truth. The I bottom see, I is, see. you don't count. In other words, I'm not going to starve to death because I don't get calories. Right. That's the truth. Right. But on the other end, I'm going to stay healthy eating 6,000 calories a day because I eat good calories. No. That's a falsity. No, that makes sense. And it, See, it just is the deeper that you get into this and the deeper that you get into this life or, you know, the cleansing life, it's, you realize what you don't need. Correct. And that's the thing. And like, Excess it's true. Kills. And you notice, Excess like, you start to well. notice, like, I, like, you know, I've been doing this for five, six years now. So like, it's like, I used to make like these almond butter bars. And I, I still, by the way, they're delicious. They're so good. And at the beginning, they work because they're less dense than what a normal person's eating. That's yeah. why those things. But now, even it probably knock you unconscious. They, they. I yeah. feel it the next morning. Correct. I'm like, oh no. Like, or if I put any almond butter. So, so I'm. This is why it's clicking for me because I'm like now. I'm like, okay, wait, no. I remember that moment that I had the almond butter. It, it like it just felt stuck. It's like yeah. glue. It just brings you down. Yeah. Yes. See, what you just said, that was what cleansing is. When the food that I know isn't produce, that's not optimum, uh -huh. the point in my life it's okay, if I keep doing the life the way we're discussing, and then I find it's not okay, that means I'm cleansing, that means I'm improving. Yeah. See? That's yep. what it's about. No, and that, That's what cleansing is. Organically step up the ladder. Now, let's say you are eating your almond butter thingies, like say at lunch. You're having a salad and two of these bars. If you're at the point where that makes you feel fine, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Do them. But you're going to see if you do the colonics and you do enemies, you're cleansing, yeah. all of a sudden you're getting exhausted. 
That's where you have to organically get rid of them yeah. and put in something lighter. And that is what cleansing is. And it does, it just, that it helps with that self-awareness and sure. introspection part of it you, too. You're, you're, you know, you're healing yourself. Mm -hmm. You're making your own decisions based on your own physical responses, totally. which is huge. You notice more. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. It's a big factor. 100%. Calorie thing is huge, though. I'm glad you brought that up. No, I'm, gl no, I'm, gl I'm glad you cleared that up. So in detoxing, though, because that's what the question was, too, was that I love the phrase curing the cure. You know, and when people are detoxing, they experience symptoms, you know, like flu-like symptoms or allergies or just yeah. th things that they're like, oh no, this is bad. Can you explain curing the cure? Yeah, well, what happens is, um, depending on the person's level of illness and toxicity, no matter how good a job we're doing, your person's doing with their diet, the colonics are doing if they're doing enemas, or whatever it is they're doing, no matter how good it's going, at the beginning especially, the first three months, invariably matter is going to awaken that isn't going to leave. So whatever little bit of awakened matter you have that used to be asleep, once it awakens, you're going to get a symptom. Yeah. Usually it comes in the form of skin outburst. I got a text from someone the other day, why how whenever I leave you I feel light, I feel fabulous, and I wake up with a cold sore on my mouth. Well, that's her, her you know, that channel is where she cleanses. People will tend to get the same clean. In other words, if it's a pimply thing, they get pimples. Mm -hmm. If it's a migraine thing, they get migraines. If it's a lower back pain thing, they get that. If the hair's coming out in the shower, they get that. Again, it's an exorcism. No matter how much matter is passing your body and giving you success, there's always a little residue left behind which gives you these nagging pain in the ass symptoms. As you step in, and keep doing the work, they disappear. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's very common. The biggest one's usually skin. People get eruptions. Well, yeah, a lot of people, because again, like the curing the cure thing is like, you know, the once they start feeling those symptoms, then they're like, oh, you know what, this isn't working for me, I'm gonna go back. And your cells are, re are rebuilding. Well, what's actually happening is you, it is working because what all of healing is, again, is an exorcism. Right. It's the removing of negativity from your being. Now, when the negativity is on the way out, but not quite there, that's what you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. The pimples you're getting from doing this before they were pimples on your skin were poison in your gut and liver. It's much better to have them on the skin. That's why the body pushes them to the skin because the skin isn't as important as your liver and your colon. So these are all good signs, they're just annoying. And remember with the hair, a common one is the loss of hair. Hair is an electrical conductor for the body. It takes in alkalinity, it takes in the rays of the light. It's literally like wires. The body knows if you've been normal that your hair is too acidic. It's not as good a conductor as it should be. So it will get rid of your old scalzy hair. But what you're not realizing is as you're seeing hair come out in the shower, better, newer, more alkaline, softer hair is growing in. So that's why, as you look and see the hair coming out in the shower, notice you're not going bald because new hair is coming in. When a person gets a really intense cleansing response, you always ask yourself, how do I feel in the belly? What's my elimination? Do I feel light? If the answer is yes, you forget about the cleansing response. But if the answer is no, like if, if you get temporarily constipated and you get pimples, that's a problem. That means your body's telling you, hey, that's when you do the colonic action. That's when it's vital you do the colonic thing because that's what will create the success. The removal of the matter, you wake up the next day, you're spotless. Yeah, and it's the worst thing you could do is just to go back to the way that you were. Yeah, to go back to the old way is not, it's, it's kind of the equivalent. Suppose you've never worked out or never run on a track. If you go run a couple of laps and wake up the next day sore and think running sucks, yeah, you're not a very smart human. You know, we, we should be able to put the pieces together. If you know your body needs cleansing, especially if you have a weight issue, and you get into this lifestyle, of course, as matter moves through, you're going to go through growing pains. Mm -hmm. and, and what it tells you is, it doesn't tell you to abandon shit. It tells you, wow, I really need this. Because yeah. for me to get this response from just two weeks of eating produce, I really need this. Yeah. You know? That makes sense. And, and it's that decision upon that happening 
that separates those who succeed from those who do not. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe if you have really bad gut issues, it's impossible to be a happy, effective human. Yeah. Your will and your determination yeah. and your spirit can carry you a few years mm -hmm. where you can force yourself to be proper mm -hmm. and live nicely, but it's work. Mm -hmm. If your gut's destroyed, you are, it's a tough life. Yeah. And, and you'll see as your gut gets better, you don't even have to work at anything. You're just in a good mood and so life is true. just happening for you. So that's why we encourage people, when you hit the wall, first ask yourself about your bowel habits. If they're not good, get a colonic. Once you empty, watch what happens. I, I couldn't agree and more. And once you navigate how to work that pattern, that's where the magic happens. I agree. Yeah, no, your energy is lifted big time. Yeah. <laughs> whenever whenever I put on Instagram, because I always do, I, loved, I, I love promoting colonics. I don't care if they cringe people out. I think that they're... Well, again, the, you do it because there'll be five or six people it connects with. And I think that no one's gonna, it's important know. for people to know. Yeah, because well, the information's not out there. For two, well, amongst two, two big reasons, there's probably more. One, I think people should know what I really do as somebody who educates about gut health, glucomining, et cetera, whatever. I think people, it's important to tell people what you're really doing. Um, it's not just like, I'm not just eating well. It's also, I'm getting a colonic. That is part of it, as we've, ta we've, we've been talking about. Um, and number two... I mean, I think it's important just for people to understand that it, it is an important thing and it's like something that will really benefit you in a way that you, unless you get one, you don't understand. And the other thing too is for the people who push the diet to the max or semi-max, mm -hmm. not only will you not succeed if you don't do it, but if you're doing that having come from a place of being ill, you'll probably get yourself way worse. Yeah. It's, it's imperative for certain people that step into the diet that they do this. And now a brief word from our sponsor. It's me. I'm the sponsor. And I wanted to tell you about the Combined by Alana Patreon because for $10 a month, you are getting weekly meal plans to follow with recipes and grocery lists, cooking tips, recipes, personalized mini consults with me where you can tell me all about your gut health bonus content from all the interviews that I'm doing. You'll also get access to the Combined by Alana community board, early access to IRL events and virtual events, not to mention 50% off my three-day food combining challenge ebook and 30% off of all Combined by Alana merch. And trust me, there's plenty more to come. Now let's get back to the episode. There's also people who are like, a colonic is going to hurt. Who well, think it's sadly, there's two types of colonics. One is hydraulic pressure. That's the one prominent throughout the country that was invented in the mid-80s. Mm -hmm. It's a box on the wall that's at the height of your body, so the water is not above the body. And that one can be rough. Like, that's a rough system. And that's the reason there are a lot of gastrointestinal physicians in California that have studied people who do a lot of colonics and they give them really bad reviews. They're inflamed, they're distended, all these awful things. And the reason is that method, in my opinion, is not a good method, it's not an effective method. Mm -hmm. So since most people in the country have gotten hydraulic pressure colonics, when you hear someone say it really hurt me, they're not lying. I wouldn't get one of those. So the method I use that's used by a the folks who've been around a while. It was called the Woods Gravity Method. It was invented in 1917 by the great Dr. Robert Woods. It's just water above the body in a tank. That's why it's called a high colonic. The water is above the body. Therefore, the water enters and exits simultaneously. The other method can't do that. They push the water in and try to pull it out with a vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. So. All I can say to people is if you've had a bad experience with the hydraulic pressure, you will not have the same experience with the gravity treatment because the water is always leaving. You don't fill up like a Zeppelin like you do with the other one. Yeah, that but makes But when sense. people say that really hurt, it usually means they went hydraulic pressure. Now, one of the mistakes people make is doing the colonics, let's say it's the right method, the gravity method, before they've prepped. So I'll have a lot of well-meaning people say, yeah, I'm going to recommend my somebody. He's all fucked up. And I'm like, no, no, no. 
you recommend the diet for two weeks, mm -hmm. then he comes in. See, if someone comes in and say it's a 50-year-old man with diverticulitis, I don't want to give that guy a colonic. I want to give that guy a colonic after I've given him a two-week preparation. Otherwise, it's going to hurt like hell. So if you take a normal person who's impacted with matter, who has not awakened matter, we don't want them. And that's why when I get people, can I come in for an appointment, new clients, first question is, what's your diet like? And then we give them a prep and make them book a week or two later. So it could hurt if all the circumstances around it are not set in place. So yeah. we always prep people because my thing is I want it to work. Yeah, you want to see the work. And, and remember, also... the, the ones that hurt are not the ones that release, they're the ones that don't release. That hurts like hell. The ones yeah. that release don't hurt if they're cathartically fabulous. I think it's to like the people who are, you just also want the people who are willing to put in the work because those are, those are generally the people that 100%. will come in for the colonic. Yeah, 100%. If someone just sense. thinks they're going to throw money at something that's going to let them get thin, you, you don't want those <laughs> people and we keep them away. Yes. I'm going to give you a list of a few wellness and health trends or things like in the oh, zeitgeist. And things in the zeitgeist. This is fun. Um, tell me what you think about them. And like, you could, in a sentence, if you have more to say, go for it. Okay. This, um, is this is, I know, I love this. I was excited for this one. First one is adding collagen or protein powders. Deadly. Collagen okay. that comes, collagen is jello. Yes. Just so you know what you're consuming. It's the cartilage of cows. Now you ask yourself, if you have any spirituality in yourself at all, uh, we're humans, we're gorillas, we're supposed to be in the jungle. We're going to break open and kill a cow and rip the cartilage out of his bone and suck it, and this is going to enhance our being? Uh, no, no. It sticks like cement in the cells. People say, yeah, but it makes my skin nice and my nails nice. So does nail polish. So does Accutane. Accutane makes your skin nice. It also kills your liver. Right? So no, we do not touch. It's a horrible product. It's on the list of things people do that they think are healthy that aren't. The second one, all protein powders, including plant protein powders, are a disaster. They stick in the body like cement. If a vegan protein powder has any merit, this is how it has merit. Someone is beginning the diet thing. They're totally new. They eat totally normal. They give up Captain Crunch in a bagel and put green pea powder in a blender with water. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, that's a better choice than what they were doing. So the only use of foods like these powders is for beginners replacing god-awful meals with this nonsense. It's a step up. You would rather get hit with a baseball bat than shot with a revolver. That's what it is. However, for a person who's into health, who's been playing the game, do not take powders. Yeah, they're trendy right now on Instagram, too. I take issue with a lot of things that they're, are... They're terrible. Yeah. They're terrible. I feel that. Now, will the people taking them notice they're terrible? No, mm -hmm. because the people taking them's diet is so awful the powder isn't bad enough for them to notice. Mm -hmm. But if you're living the way we're living, that's what these questions I'm answering. I'm not talking now to normal folks. Yeah. It's the people in the loop don't do powders. Yeah, no, we don't believe in a quick fix. Also, um, they don't fix anything. They just they don't cement fix. you. They <laughs> stick in your colon like it, glue. Totally, totally. No, I, yes, I speak about that um, at length. Have you heard of the chia seed detox? It can't detox. See, it's a seed. <laughs> The Do you only, know what it is? I, the, you, you don't, you don't give it a shit? It turns them into a pudding and eat it three times a day, something um, like that. So, no, but that is the chia seed pudding. Um, the chia seed detox, it's basically mixing lemon juice, chia seeds, water. You sit for It sits for 30 to 60 minutes, and then you drink it first thing in the morning. <laughs> oh, it's just a one-day thing? Um, one time a day? Oh, I don't know if it's a one day. Okay. Day. Let's, Here's the let's, thing. let's say you're doing right. it. No, we're, we're going to do this for a, a month. It's January. But you're eating <laughs> after you do it. You're not just doing that all day. No. Okay. All I don't think so. Do, Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Chia seeds, when you soak them, they can be slightly laxative. They go through the bowel because they're slimy. Yeah. It might give you a nice movement. If it's a cleanse, it's a snail's cleanse. I mean, it might give you a better bowel movement the next day. If it does that, go ahead. But is it doing anything fabulous? No. And to call it a cleanse, it, it, it's a stretch. Will you rank it against Metamucil? 
Oh, I don't think anyone should take Metamucil who doesn't do colonics because Metamucil is psyllium. And once you take psyllium, psyllium absorbs 10 times its weight and waste off the walls of the bowel. If you take husk? Yeah, if you take products like that, it's imperative you do colonics. You have it sitting? Yeah, but you also live with a colonic unit. I would never yes, take this if I couldn't treat myself the next day. Yes, you do. Because it's strong. It's you funny. See? I have a friend who um, was like, I'm constipated because my friends love to come to me if they're constipated. Um, they're like, what do I do? She was like, I'm doing psyllium husk. It'll I'm still them. constipated. I go, oh, no, no, It'll no. It'll kill them. Oh, no. if, see, what psyllium does, it gets into embedded old matter. If you're having the trouble passing new matter, the psyllium binds the two, you cement. I've seen it. I saw a woman go deaf yeah, taking no. unsupervised psyllium. But in terms of all that powdery stuff, it's mm -hmm. nonsense. The chia seed thing is lightweight. Sure. Again, if you give up a breakfast and sure. do that, it's good. If you're in our life, it's a step down because mm -hmm. you never want to put non-fruit vegetables in your body at a bed. Yes. That works for beginners. Or what, maybe just water or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, okay. What about Aura Rings, Fitbits, measuring devices we use now? We talked a bit about nonsense. measuring. Nonsense. First of all, Anytime you put a device on your body, these newfangled things, you're radiating yourself silly. Mm -hmm. You're radiating yourself silly. Whatever good you think you're getting from it is greatly neutralized by the volume of radiation. Now, when you look at your wrist where you put these things, mm -hmm. right into the soft tissue there, it's mm -hmm. deadly. You don't want to play these games. Also, you don't want to get into validation. All right, stay away from these things. If you're doing your lifestyle, you will be fine. Mm -hmm. The whole thing about pulse rate and all that exercise talk is nonsense. All you need to do is make sure you move around a lot during the day. Humans are meant to be ambulatory. We're meant to move. But this whole idea that I got to get my heart rate up is bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. Exercise was developed as it is during the Industrial Revolution when factories went up. People started to sit around and knit or started to sit around making a pipe or working in some kind of something. And then Jack Wallane and Paul Bragg, the fathers of exercise, realized, hey, these poor people are sitting on their asses all day indoors. Hence, movement came, which is fabulous. But if you think indigenously, if you live in Manhattan, you walk to the post office, you walk to work, you walk to buy your food, you walk to your gym, you do a quick workout, you're good. You don't need to count steps. If you're healthy, you don't need to worry about your pulse rate, and your this rate, and your that rate. It's just maniacal, ego-driven nonsense. Yeah. And, and again, you're putting radiation into your system. So not recommended. Yeah. Not recommended. It keeps us out of touch with ourselves. Correct. There's that, thank you. We're looking for an external object to judge ourselves. Get in touch. What's my energy level like when I wake up? Mm -hmm. Before I put anything in my body, I should be able to do a yoga class, the laundry, work out, run, shop, be me without intake. Yeah. If you are that way, you don't need any device mm -hmm. to tell you that. Bone broth. Okay. This is an interesting one. Again, we have the same answer. You're a beginner. Sure. You eat cheeseburger platters. You read about bone broth. You throw out your cheeseburger platters, you have a bowl of bone broth. That's fantastic. It's a big step up. Methadone won't kill you. Heroin will. Is methadone good for you? Absolutely not. Is bone broth good for you? Absolutely not. Is it doing anything good for you? Absolutely not. Can you use the minerals in bone broth? Absolutely not. It's bone of a cow. However, if you're new, and this is where we give latitude, and you're used to waking up and having a turkey club for lunch, and you throw away your turkey club sandwich and drink a bowl of bone broth, hooray for you. I'm the first one to tell you to do it. Why? Because you're harming yourself much less. Mm -hmm. But understand, is it doing anything good for you? Absolutely not. Is there anything efficacious coming from it? Absolutely not. But I've heard it as a ton of minerals. Minerals do not exist past the temperature of 118. Once the, a food goes 118 Fahrenheit or higher, the minerals die. Mm -hmm. Boiled water is up, I think, 212 or something. Whatever minerals might be in there are dead, but this is cow bone. Use your spirit. Think about humanity. Humans don't have the claws to rip apart a cow. We're not supposed to be eating cow bone. 
So while it's not harmful, it has its place for a beginner. Anyone taking the time to listen to the shtick we're doing, that's that in the loop, should not be doing bone broth. It's nonsense. But it can be used by beginners. Intermittent fasting. That's fabulous. I've done that. I mean, I've been to, they took this name. One of the things that happened with the social network in the health world, things that have been done for 20, 30, 40 years by people my age, these kids came along and attached new names to them and took ownership to it like they started it. Yeah. I've been waking up and just breathing till 4 or 5 o'clock for 30 years. It's fabulous. Here's the thing. Not eating awakens poison. So what you have to be aware of is at the beginning when you're poisoned, this is what I recommend for everyone. This is how you start your day. You wake up and you take note of yourself. Can I jog? Can I do a laundry? Can I do push-ups? Do I have enough energy and chi? And do I have enough vibe to go do my life? If the answer is yes, then you intermittent fast until the answer is no. The cleaner you are, the longer that is. At the beginning, it may be 45 minutes. Hooray for you. Once it gets to 45 minutes, I'm getting tipsy, then you do your juicy your fruit. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're in good shape and you could do three hours on nothing, I'm a huge fan of that. I love dry fasting. That's what we called it back in the day. Yeah. The key is, when does dry fasting become a fuck up? When your ego tells you, well, I heard that old stupid guy in the tape say he goes till five o'clock, so I'm going till six. And meanwhile, your body's too toxic. The poisons are loosening up too quickly. You're getting sick, but because you want to do it, you keep going. That makes a good thing a bad thing. So how do we intermittent fast? We wake up. We just do our life until we can't do our life. Mm -hmm. At that point, we start intake. With time... Through the colonics, the diet, you'll notice you wake up and all of a sudden it's noon and you're out doing your life and you haven't sipped water. Love that. Kind. Anything after that is not fasting. As you get healthy, you're going to notice that that point of fasting is going to really lengthen. That's a good one. The other thing with fasting, this isn't fasting, but we never eat between meals. There is no such thing as a healthy snack. Oh, I'm so if you're happy taking the time that. to listen to this old stick, as much leeway as we give people, we do not allow snacks. If you eat between lunch and dinner, here's the conundrum. If your lunch is a salad, a yam, and beets, cooked beets, that takes three hours to go through the stomach. So it hits three hours, you have rice cakes as a snack. That's not horrible. What is horrible is now in two hours when you want to do dinner, if you put a dinner salad on top of a rice cake, mm -hmm. it's going to bounce off the rice cake, ferment, turn to beer. There are no snacks. If you're putting the time in to listen to all this, we're going to assume you at least are into it to make a commitment like that. Yes. Whatever you eat between lunch and dinner will screw this up. Yeah. So please don't. If you have to eat between meals, just take spirulina oh, yeah. or chlorella tablets. You do whatever you can. You stand on your head and whistle, Dixie, not to eat between meals. Also, do not eat before bed. When you're done with dinner, no food till tomorrow. Half the world is starving to death. You don't need food after dinner. Have a, this is where we want oomph. You know, like a little bit of oomph, a little bit of discipline. You finish dinner, nothing till the next day. If you put food in the body two or three hours later, it's a two-edged disaster. One, it's going to bounce off the dinner from men turn to gas. This will create fake hunger and fatigue, which you will interpret as that you're hungry. Two, you're going to eat and fall asleep on the food in the stomach, which will kill you. We don't want to go to sleep with food in our stomach. So we implore people, no food between meals. And... For those who have never taken like sun chlorella, for example. It's little pellets. They're very small. You take like 10 to 15 of them. Even if for lunch I had a sandwich, you'd still say take it if I'm hungry. If it's two or three. Yeah. The, the chlorella dissolves immediately. It's not. A, yeah. Got it. That's how you get through hunger. Okay. Cool. Yes. Ozempic. Look, I'll be honest. You know, I, I know people. If you're 350 pounds, you've tried things, you're discouraged. Why not? I have no problem with somebody who's morbidly obese, given it a shot, as long as we can get them off. What worries me now are people who are not overweight, who are taking this to raise it down fat. 
Like one of the things we do when I book new treatments, I get height, weight, and um, age, okay. height, weight, age, gender, and what medication are you on? Now, you know, you used to get people on a thyroid med or maybe they're taking a Zoloft. You would hear different things. Yeah. But now, we had two cases in the last month. Height, 5'6", one girl was. Weight, 131. Drugs, Ozempic. So my question was, how long have you been on Ozempic? Two weeks. Do you have diabetes? No. Oh. So here's a 130-pound girl, 5'6", which is totally not overweight. Right. Taking a weight loss drug. Now shame on the doctor for giving it to her. This is a needle. We have people in the country shooting themselves up. It's inherently scary. What you want to know about Ozempic, if you're not grossly overweight and if your life isn't ruined, it will destroy your muscle tissue, which has now not been put out by radical lefties like me. That's put out by the medical profession. They are now telling people to eat high meat protein diets because it's going to ruin your muscle tissue. They're telling people they're working on drugs to help build your muscle tissue. It constipates and dehydrates. I'm getting a lot of texts. The Ozempic people are coming in right. because they can't poop. They're not hungry. Take a deep breath. Everyone who's contemplating this who isn't morbidly obese. If you're even 5'7", as a woman, 150, that's way too small to be contemplating. Ask yourself, this is a drug that's meant to stimulate my pancreas. I'm shooting a needle into myself every day. It's gonna dehydrate my bowel and burn out my muscle tissue. Should I take this? The answer is no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because back in the 2000s, there were two medications. One was called Fenfen, one was called Redux, and they were these miracle weight loss drugs. Everybody was taking them. These celebrities, people got thin until they started dying, and they actually started dying of renal failure, different things. It's off the market, you it. gone. We want to learn from our history. You know that thing, people who don't study history are condemned to repeat it? We want to learn from our history. These, these Dr. Faustus drugs where you sell your soul to the devil for this quick yeah. result, they never work. So anyone out there, unless your life is awful and you know, you're 280, but for people where you need a, what we call a razoring or a trimming, please, don't, don't take it. Cold plunging. Okay. The last one. One of my favorite things. To Me do. too. My, my most favorite thing on earth is a sauna followed by ice water. But here's the thing again. This is a big. We don't take a 300 pound man who eats what he wants and smokes stogies and tell him to run marathons. The thing with cold plunging is you have to be in a given level of health to do something like this. So if you're prone to heart issues, if you're prone to blood pressure issues, mm -hmm. if you run high, if you're prone to getting like headaches where your head pounds or palpitations, be careful, okay? Because, you know, cold contracts. The reason it heals, it squeezes the cells tight. All this carbonic gas and poison, like squeezing the sponge, come pop and do it. It's an amazing thing to do. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan, but make sure that you're capable of doing it. Like, ask yourself, if you're on daily medication, and if the medication is for anxiety or depression, okay. But if it's for your heart, your blood pressure, things like that, if you're prone to panic attacks, careful. Start with maybe a cool shower. But if you're okay and fine, it's fabulous because it's a physical squeezing type. And here's another thing. Cold plunging in ice water blows away cryotanks. There's no contest which is better. Anyone can do three minutes in a cryo tank. I've done it many times. You come out of it, within five minutes, you don't feel like anything happened to you. When you go into the Russian bath, my favorite place on the planet, the two Russian baths in Manhattan, full, I'm gonna give a plug. No, fabulous. you love it. 88 Fulton Street, fabulous. Uh, 10th Street between 1st and A. It's been there since 1892, it looks it. Fabulous place. They have ice pools. The ice dipping pool in 88 Fulton is the bomb. So you sit in the hot sauna, you sweat your butt off, you run down the hallway, jump in ice water, you're high as a kite, you love everybody because the heat opens you up, the liver cleanses, the skin, the kidneys, the cold squeeze, it's like wringing out a sponge. You gotta get all the water out of that sponge. By the time you get out of that ice water, you're fabulous. It's the bomb. That's Highly recommended, just make sure, take 
you know, stock of your own health before you do that. If you're young and fit, go for it. Sauna cold, to me, is the most important non-dietetic thing in health. If you wake up and you're tired, or like you didn't get enough sleep, you have a food hangover, for people into health, when they cheat, they often end up with food hangovers because they're healthy enough to notice. Mm -hmm. You got the third eye ache, this feels cloudy, you're like, oh, what am I gonna do? Go into the shower, put the water on maximum cold. Let it hit the top of your head and the back of your neck. Those are the two important spots, the armpits. Get the whole body, do a three minute ice shower, watch the hangover, it's gone, it's magical, it's fabulous. That's Big fan. A great tip, yep. great tip. I want to mention for anyone who might be interested, Mike yes. Perrine and I did this. Mike teaches these classes these seminars, and he asked me to do one. It's about three and a half to four hours of information. I cover as much as I could about the specifics of the diet, different three-day cleanses, different two-week cleanses, how to use psyllium, inversion boards, all. It's, it's just a ton of info. If anyone's interested, you can just look up Mike at Everyday Detox. Mm -hmm. um, Alana can give you specifics about how you can get a nice break on that as well. The last thing is I made you something oh i make my all of my guests something oh, nice. um i put it in your uh your oh, fridge thank you. I'm it's excited. i make them their favorite thing i know yours is soup i usually ask people but i i know i already knew yours is soup Excellent. so i thank made you. you carrot and japanese sweet potato blended ginger soup oh nice yeah that sounds fat thank you. no oils oh so i know you're thank bit you. you're big on a blended soup yes Thank you for spending so much time with me. We already spent so much time together um, in fabulous. a totally different setting. Fun. But no, this is so much fun. And it I, was. And, and I, I feel we covered stuff that's a lot more important than just do this, don't do yeah. that. Because I think we need in the modern culture to get people out of their head. we got to get away from the mechanics and get more into the bigger truths. I agree. The, the philosophical, wider range truths first. The dots. Too yeah. many dots. What do they call them? Bullets. Yeah. You know, and that's what I felt this did, so I'm very happy. Thank yeah. you, sweetie. Good questions. No. You led it very well. Thank you. No, Thank I you. really, Sincerely. really, really appreciate it because you're obviously, like I said in the beginning, a mentor and teacher well. to me. And I think that everyone will take something from this. I hope so. It was fun. For sure. Thank you. Thank you.